When you have Joshua chapter 6, say amen. amen. We're going to start at chapter 6, verses 1 through 10, then I'll hit 15, 16, and 20. <clears throat> the rest you can read on your own time. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priest and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on and compass the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass, when Joshua had spoken unto the people, that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of the ram's horns passed on before the Lord and blew with the trumpets, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. And the armed men went before the priest that blew with the trumpets, and the rearward came after the ark, the priest going on and blowing with the trumpets. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you to shout, to the day I bid you shout, then ye shall shout. Verse 15 and 16 and then 20. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. And verse 20 says, So the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went, into, went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. So, I guess for a topic today, we'll say the three things we can learn from the siege at Jericho. The three things that we can learn from the siege at Jericho. As someone who has been in the military, I'm speaking of me now, and in the theater of war, at least a couple of times, walking around a city and coming forth with a great shout and the walls coming down is not typically how you win a military campaign. But how many of you know that our God is a supernatural God? Amen. That he doesn't think the way man thinks. He doesn't do things the way man does them. God moves according to the way he desires. God doesn't operate in the natural. God operates in the supernatural. And there will be times, here's the first thing that we can learn, there will be times that God will call us to do things that make no earthly sense in order to seize victory in our lives. There will be times that God will call us to do things that make no earthly sense to seize victory in our lives. You see, at times, God will do a thing very unconventionally to bring victory, but also that we might know that he is God and he alone brings deliverance. There's no doubt that the way God brought this thing forth, man couldn't take any credit for it because man was used to fighting a certain way. Joshua was used to fighting a certain way. They were used to having the sword of the Lord, if you will, uh, to, to, to take victory over their enemy, but not this time. 
You see, spiritual warfare is such that we won't always understand what God is doing. Amen. And it's, sometimes it will absolutely make no sense. But it doesn't have to because the Bible tells us this in 1 Corinthians 1, 27 through 29. He says, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world. In other words, those things that seem to make no sense to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. And the base things and the things of the world and the things which are despised. In other words, things that seem to be very insignificant. Have God chosen, yea, and the things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. You see, God wanted Israel to understand that I'm going to win this battle without you swinging your mighty sword. That we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this world. That the weapons of our warfare are not carnal in this fight, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. In other words, I'm going to win this battle through psychological warfare so that all flesh will know that all glory belongs to God. Amen. I'm going to use something that seems to make absolutely no sense to man, that seems to be foolish and insignificant to man, and I'm going to bring down the nation of Jericho so that all the earth will know that the true and living God is the God of Israel. And how many times has God asked you to do something that makes no sense to bring about victory? How many times? I'm going to tell you, I'm a witness. I'm a witness. God has asked me a number of times in my life to do something that seems to make no sense to bring about victory. Here's a couple of things. Some years ago, when I didn't have a whole lot of money and the washer and the dryer was about to go out, he said, go home and lay your hands on your washer and dryer and tell it to live. Now, wait a minute. I have a background in maintenance. I have a background in, it, in electrical repair and mechanical repair. To go home and do what? Lay my hands on what and tell it to do what? That washer and dryer is on its last leg. But how many of you know I just obeyed, went home, laid my hands on my washer and dryer, and got at least another year out of it? At the time, it didn't make no sense. At the time, it absolutely did not make no sense. But I went ahead on and did it anyway. That was another time, running into some financial issues. You know, you, how many of you know you can pay your tithes and offers and still have some financial issues? Amen. How many of you know that you can pay your tithes and offers and sometimes, man, run a little bit short? Well, I, I, I had lined it up, been faithful in my giving, faithful in tithes and faithful in offers, but still running a little short. And the Lord said, go home, take your checkbook. And put it in the pages of scripture where it talks about um, 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 financial freedom and, and getting out of debt and, you know, God giving you the power to get wealth. Man, I'm going to tell you, it, it didn't make a whole lot of sense. But how many of you know that God delivered in that thing? Amen. And then there was another time, and this is one right here I'll never forget. I'm unemployed, been without a job for at least six months now. My children are a little bit smaller. You got a house payment, you got a car payment, you got all of those things, light, water, and all of the rest of those bills. I finally get a job offer. And when I get the job offer, I believe in it's the job that I wanted. And the employer said, well, the only thing that we ask you to do, Mr. Mason, is that you'll work a couple of Wednesday evenings and uh, that uh, you, you're going to have to work at least one weekend. And I said, okay. I said, okay, because I, I got to pay these bills. The pressure is on. And on my ride home, the Lord says to me, you can't take that job. You can't take that job because it's going to cause you to be able to not serve me at the level that I desire. And this wasn't the worst part. I had to take that home to my wife and say, I got a job offer, but God said. Now, at the time, it didn't make no sense. 
But looking at where I am now, it makes perfect sense. You see, God will ask you to do some things at times that make no sense. But we got to learn how to just step into it and obey God. The Bible says to trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledging him, and he shall direct thy path. And sometimes what happens is when God tells us, step on into that thing, and it seems to make no sense, we're trying to figure it all out. Some stuff you ain't going to be able to figure out, baby. Some stuff you ain't going to get all the details. Some things you ain't going to know everything, but God tells us, believe God, keep the faith. Amen. Listen, for Joshua and them, man, that didn't make no sense. Do what? Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to walk around uh, 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 six days, one time a day, and I'm going to be quiet during the whole time. You're going to blow the rams on. I, I get all that, and I know that God is in the midst. And on the seventh day, we're going to do what? We're going to walk around this city uh, uh, seven times. And the ram's horn is going to blow, and then we're going to shout, and the walls are going to come down? Okay, God. Sounds logical to me. No, I'm just saying. See, we can, we can look at the story and read the story, and our faith is built up based on the story. But until you had to be there, until you lived it, until you was there, some of us, some of us know what I'm talking about. God has asked some of us, listen, I need you to do this thing, man. And this thing ain't going to make a whole lot of sense to you. And in fact, even some of your family members might question it. I remember telling a close family member, I can't, I can't take that job. And, I, and, and they said, why? And I said, because God said, and all they said was, do what? I mean, I, I knew based on the expression of, 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 of the way they came back at me, that they don't, they don't see what I see. And see, the thing is, people ain't going to see what you see. They ain't going to hear it the way you're hearing it from God. They're not walking that thing out. Make no mistake about it. God will ask you to do some things that seem to make no sense, that he might bring victory to your life. But let me tell you something, baby. Walk in it. Keep pressing. Keep the faith. Amen. Trust him. He'll bring it to pass. I'm a living witness. I believe today that I am where I am because I said no to that employer in a time where I really needed it. But the blessing is, is when I got home and told my wife, my wife said, it's okay. We'll rise and we'll fall together. If we got to lose it, we can lose it all as long as we got each other. You see, it, it might be easier as a single person. I knew I'd get a witness somewhere. <laughs> it might be easier as a single person to walk away from something like that. But when you got a wife at home and two small kids, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a different story. I, you know, I, I, I can take care of me if I have to. I can go get three, four, five jobs if I have to. But I had a couple of little ones in there and a wife. Depending upon me. That's, that's what I mean about that innate nature in man to fight. I had to put down the sword, if you will. I had to put down those carnal weapons, if you will, and begin to walk by faith. How many of you know you got to walk by faith and not by sight? Every day. Every day. Listen, you, listen man, God ain't going to show you everything. God ain't going to tell you everything. Some things you won't know until you get to heaven. But the Bible says, walk by faith and not by sight. Everything you ain't going to see. In fact, if he gave you all the details, it wouldn't be faith. It wouldn't be faith. It made no sense. But God is not controlled by the natural. He's controlled by the supernatural. In fact, this is how Isaiah 55 and 8 says it. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither your ways my ways, saith the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts are your thoughts. Listen, so we're going to, if we're going to begin to think like God, 
If we're going to have the mind of God, we're going to have to have face time with God. We're going to have to have face time with God, and I ain't talking about your electronic devices. I ain't talking about your Apple. I, I ain't talking about your Android. I ain't talking about that kind of FaceTime. I'm talking about time on your face on the floor. With your face pressed against the carpet. Seeking the Lord for that thing that you desperately need. But let me tell you something. What you desperately need is him. What we all desperately need is him, for in his presence, there's fullness of joy. At his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What we need more than anything is him. We need prayer. We need time with him. We need to set aside. We need to set aside that thing called life. I, I heard somebody told me the other day, man, it, Pastor, it's hard, man, at times to get with God because life gets in the way. You know what I told him? You ain't got no life without the abundant life giver. How, how, does, how does life get in the way when the abundant life giver is the one that gives life? If you're going to have life, you, you have to make time. Because outside of God, it's not life. It's just living. Catch that. They said, Pastor, life gets in the way. And I said, bro, if, if, it, ain't, if it ain't in Christ, it ain't, it ain't life. You're just living. We got to get back to the place where we have life. And life more abundantly. Secondly, what God asked Joshua to do was a test of faith and obedience. Here's what Hebrews tells us. It says, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. How many of you know God will move when he sees faith? And you can always tell if a person is walking in faith by their obedience. Don't, don't, listen, don't tell me how much faith you have. Let me see you walk it out. Let me see you operate in the commands of the Lord. Faith, if it, if it have not works, it's, it's dead. And so it, 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 was, it was so much more than just, than, than just Joshua believing God. Joshua had to demonstrate his belief by walking that thing out in obedience, and then it brought forth a great victory. I understand believing him, but we have to believe him to the degree that we obey him. You see, this is not the way Joshua would have done it before. This is not the way Joshua had defeated his enemy in battle in the past. This is not the way Moses had commanded him to do it, which could have been a problem. Because when you start looking at the way you did things in the past, you can assume that God is going to do it the same way in the future. You start making assumptions. Well, you make a, well, you start making assumptions. <laughs> See, y'all knew. I ain't even had to say it. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. See, when you start making assumptions, you, based on your assumptions that God is going to do it the same way he's always did it, you could miss God based upon your assumptions. My, you know what my prayer is? Lord, any way you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Any way you want to do it, God, I'll be satisfied because you are God. You are sovereign. You are God all by yourself. You are all powerful. You allow all things to happen or either you cause all things to happen. Go with it. Go with it. You see, it, it, it would have been an easy, easy for Joshua to assume that because God brought victory this way in the past, he would do it the same way. But in chapter 5, Joshua had an encounter with the pre-incarnate pre Lord Jesus Christ. 
and there was no doubt that he was going to obey God. Tell your neighbor you got to obey God. Tell your other neighbor you got to obey God. Find one or two people and just high five them and tell them, man, you got to obey God. You, 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 listen, you, you, you got you to gotta obey God. You got to obey God. We got a lot of people around here saying a lot of stuff, man. We got a lot of people around here talking a whole lot of stuff. But you got to obey God because the thing that moves God more than anything is faith and obedience. Listen, that's your currency in heaven. You can't buy it. You can't pay for it. I don't care who your mama and them is. I don't care who your daddy was. He could be pastor so-and-so, bishop so-and-so, apostle so-and-so. You, you, can't, you can't buy your way into this thing. We're saved by grace through faith and that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God and not of works lest any man should boast. You, you have nothing to boast about because you are saved by grace. God's unmerited favor. God's favor and kindness shown to you without regard to worth or merit or in, or in spite of whether you deserve it or not. It's the grace and the goodness of God. And so as a people of God, we got to learn how to obey God. Trust him to the degree that you're not leaning. Man, that's. Man, that's so hard because the truth is, man, some of us think we know more than God. Let me turn around. Some of us think we know more than God. <laughs> I'll speak to the wall. You can get in situations where, where God is, is calling you to do that thing that make no sense. And you're trying to figure out how you can make it make sense. Let me tell you, it's not. Sometimes you just have to begin to walk it out. Number of things that happened in my life and yours too that made no sense. And those things that seemed to be foolish was the very things that God brought victory in. Was the very thing that God did a thing. I, I didn't see that, God. Walk around what and you going to do what? And then all I got to do is shout? And the walls are coming down from, from, from a military background. So I'm speaking from my experience because if you have not been there, you don't know. That makes no sense. But God. But God. Just look at the, fi the, the, the final piece. Joshua chapter 6, verse 10 and 20. I'm going to read them together. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout. Then ye shall shout. Verse 20 says, So the people shouted, when the priests blew the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Tell your neighbor there's power in your shout. Tell your other neighbor there's power in your shout. To give God a shout is a sound of worship. To give God a shout is a sound of praise. To give God a shout is a sound of worship. To give God a shout is a sound of war. Where's the last time you shouted out to God for victory? When is the last time that you opened your mouth to the degree that you cried out to God at the top of your lungs? Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye the Lord, he is God. It is he that have made us and not we ourselves. The psalmist says, clap your hands, all ye people, 
and shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of a trumpet. But here's the one I like for sure, man. Samuel, 1 Samuel 4, 5, and 6 says, And when the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout. So that, listen, so that the earth rang. Have you ever shouted out unto the Lord until the earth rang and called out and reverberated because of your, your shout? And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, what meaneth the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? And they understood that the ark of the Lord was come into the camp. Listen, the Israelite shout was so awesome that for a moment it had the devil confused. That's why you got to shout out unto the Lord. That's why you got to praise him. Because when you begin to shout, bondages begin to break. When you begin to shout, the walls begin to fall. When you begin to shout, doubt, fear, and unbelief begins to fall. When you begin to shout, rejection and self-rejection has to go. When you begin to shout, uh, uh, healing and, and deliverance uh, it comes forth. When you begin to shout, y'all remember the, the, the commercial, the washing powder commercial. If you want tough stains out. Out. Shout it out. Anybody remember that? They were trying to tell you something. Open your mouth and give God some praise. Open your mouth and give God some glory. If you want tough stains out, shout it out. We got anybody that feels like shouting out to the Lord? Your victory is in your shout. I wish I had one or two or three that know what I'm talking about. You want to be a noisy crew. You ought to want to be a noisy crew in your home. You ought to want to be a noisy crew. If you want tough stains out, shout it out. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. We learn from a washing powder commercial that if you want your victory, shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Because God don't like a dirty mouth. He don't like a dirty heart. And he don't like our dirty ways. David said, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Well, how does he do that? When he saved your soul, when Christ Jesus saved your soul and made you whole, he gave you the power to shout it out. To speak to the mountain. Have faith in God. For whosoever shall say to that mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe in those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have. Whatsoever he said. You don't understand the power of your shout. You might not understand the power of your praise. You might not understand that when you open your mouth unto the Lord that Satan don't know what to do with that. That Satan don't know what to do with your shout. That Satan don't know what to do with your praise. That Satan don't know what to do with your worship. What meaneth this thing? There was a momentary confusion. And if you shout long enough unto the Lord, the devil will be so confused that he'll at least have to leave you for a season. Now, we know he's eventually going to come back. But I'll take a season, baby, of absolute peace. Some of y'all been too quiet. Some of you all, all, y'all, some of you all have just allowed the devil to do what he want to do. You just take it. You like that punching bag that I used to keep in my garage. Every day I go out there and get my work in. Boom, boom. And I beat it so much till it got this imprint of I own you. It got an imprint in the bag. To where everybody knew Pastor Mason was beating that thing so much that that's his bag. 
That's what Satan has done to some of us. He's beat us so bad that people can look and say, wait a minute. That person say they belong to God. But every time I see them, they look beat up. Where's your shout? Where's your spiritual anger? Where, where are those prayers that root and rout demons? You see, if you, 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 you see, if you can't come up with one yourself, you got a scripture full of them where you can just open it up and begin to, listen, not, listen, rout demons. Cause demons to flee. Because if you want tough stains out, it ain't just enough to, well, Lord, I know you're going to make a way. Sometimes I just have to open my mouth and shout it out. You hear me? If you want tough stains out, God has given, God has given you this authority. You in Christ and Christ is in you. And he said, call those things that be not as though they were. Listen, you, if you don't open your mouth, that's your problem. You know, you do have the right to remain silent. But know that if you do, it's going to kill you. <laughs> know that if you do, it's going to destroy you. In the kingdom of God, silence is okay from time to time. But the Lord wants to hear from you. And I know we say he know my heart. He does. But he wants you to open your mouth and give him glory. Amen. And, release, and, and release that thing. Let it out. Shout it out. That's all right. Don't, don't, worry, don't worry about your neighbor next door. You see, if, if you live in a townhouse and they hear you shout, they might be standing there next door listening to the wall. What, what mean if these things? Amen. Let me go see if I can get some of that. Well, you, you see, you, see you, don't, you don't know who you're going to touch by your shout. But one thing we do know, when you shout out unto God with a voice of triumph, you're going to touch them demons. You're going to get their attention. Use the power that God has placed in you in the person of the Holy Ghost. Sometimes, and y'all might not believe this, but sometimes I have to go through self-deliverance. I'm talking about me. Now, I know y'all made it over. Y'all, y'all made it over. I, I get that. But every now and then, I have to go through self-deliverance. Because when you, when you listen, when, when you're feeding and you're pouring out, you, you need God to pour in. And sometimes, sometimes, I got to do more than just read. And so I'll pull out all them old deliverance forms. And start calling those things out all over again. I don't, I don't just believe that I've arrived and that I'm over them now. Sometimes I just go right back through self-deliverance. Pride come out in the name of Jesus. Lying come out. That old lying and deceitful spirit come out in the name of Jesus. Spirit of fornication, come out in the name of Jesus. Pastor Mason, spirit of deceit, come out in the name of Jesus. The lack of submission, come out in the name of Jesus. 
spirit of masturbation come out in the name of Jesus. Spirit of worry come out in the name of Jesus. It's, it's my shout. It's my, it's my war cry. It's my time of self-deliverance. I know y'all deliver it. Y'all made it over. But I ain't made it over yet. So I'm going to shout unto God. I'm going to take myself through that self-deliverance from time to time. I'm going to go back and read that old stuff and call it out in the name of Jesus. I'm going to go and I'm going to open up that journal from where you wrote that thing and call it forth in the name of Jesus. Man, you want a deliverance ministry. You're in a deliverance ministry. Now, your pastor has put himself on blast. But I ain't bound, so it don't matter. <laughs> See what I'm saying? E e e even, listen, e even, even hiding things. How, you, you think you're hiding things from from, from, from God. God sees that. And, and you know, the enemy loves darkness. So if you, if, you, if, you won't, if you won't confess a thing, if you won't shout it out, the enemy's cool with that. Because what is he like to live in the dark? You see, when you start that self-deliverance, you start to put light on it. You start to shed light on it. And guess where Satan's got to go? He can't stand the light. It's like one of them old vampires. You know, when you, when, when you, put, when you turn that light on, you, you remember back in the day, them vampires, they started to wrinkle up when that light hit them? <laughs> Cannot be afraid Amen. of shouting out to the Lord and getting your deliverance. And if you don't know how to, I can help you with that. We have a deliverance team that can help you with that. But here's the thing. We can't make you. You got to decide that you willingly desire to give it up. So that that Jericho wall that's fortified around you can come down. You see, because the, the thing about a, a stronghold is a stronghold kind of fortifies you. You, you, ever, look, you ever looked at, at, at some of those, you know, movies back in the day where they're trying to get up the wall, you know, and trying to climb the wall, and, you know, the enemy just pours hot grease on them or hot oil, and they can't seem to get up? The, the, the strongholds have a, has a way of, of building a wall around your mind. So that God can't get in. And you can't break through to get out. And so it starts as a foothold. But when it becomes a stronghold, you need that self-deliverance. You need God to bring you out. Come on, stand on your feet. Hallelujah. 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 Tell you something. God going to throw some stuff at you, and it might not make any sense. But before you disdain that thing and say it ain't God, you better try it by the Spirit of God. And as my mama used to say, if you don't know, you need to ask somebody. But ask the right somebody. Amen. 
You hear me? That's the right somebody. Praise the Lord. Listen, you, you're in a place where you can get your freedom. You're in a place where you can get your victory. Listen, you're in a place where you know what? Ain't nobody going to judge you because you're dealing with that thing. Because guess what? We all have our thing or had our thing. Praise the Lord. I can play back the video of most of y'all and see where you were to where you are now and what God has done and what a wonderful thing he has done. Amen? And so what we learn from Joshua chapter 6 is that sometimes God will call you to do a thing that makes no sense. The second thing we learn is we got to walk by faith and not by sight. And the third thing is there's power in your shout if you want tough things out. Shout it out. Because God has given you the mouth to open it. To speak to the mountain. Didn't say wrestle with it. Said speak to it. Didn't say climb it. Said speak to it. Didn't say run around it. Speak to it. But where's your shout? Where's your righteous anger to begin to come against that thing? that continues to keep you bound, that continues to keep you locked in. Make the enemy, listen, if the enemy is going to come against you, make him come up with something new. Don't keep fighting on that same old hill. Just go on and take that hill. And make him come up with something else. Raise your hands to the Lord. What a mighty God we serve. Yes, 